Hello, BookTube. <laughs> I know that's all you really care about. <laughs> then welcome to your daily penguin, not your daily schnauzer. Your daily penguin. <laughs> this is a, a slow crawl through my penguin classics, book by book and author by author. <laughs> what Hannah at Hannah's Books refers to as my march of the penguins. <laughs> uh, and thanks to a, a vague organization of my shelves done years ago, we are mostly stuck in the ancient world. Not that that's a bad thing. We're going through ancient authors of Greece and Rome and having a wonderful time, at least I am, <laughs> uh, reviewing them and talking about what you get in the penguin version of them. And we've been sort of bouncing back and forth between ancient Greece and ancient Rome, and you might be thinking, well, okay, uh, if you did Sophocles last time, then it's an ancient Roman today, but no, <laughs> no, because there's more to Penguin Classic than that. We are doing an ancient culture. We're doing the third leg of the tripod. We're doing the ancient Hebrew culture. <laughs> We're doing the Penguin Classic version of the Psalms. These were uh, institutional prayers and incantations and poems that were written and refined and recopied and relearned and re, re and uh, uh, subdivided and reattributed for centuries from roughly 1000 BC to roughly 500 BC uh, and some of them are part of our intellectual and cultural furniture they just become that solid they're not as well known now people can't people don't just in general in the modern world organized religion is uh, is either flatlining or on the decline uh, and that means unfortunately I mean unfortunately that means uh, less literacy about biblical and scriptural literature which is unfortunate that's uh, because there's a lot of beauty there there's a lot of nonsense there as well uh, but uh, sorry I'm a little bit distracted because Frida is doing something what are you doing baby what are you doing I want to say hi again? You're, she was nibbling at something down there, but there's nothing to nibble at. You shouldn't be nibbling anyway. <laughs> Look at that face. Ooh. <laughs> Here, why don't you come on the bed so that you're not tempted to nibble? <laughs> there you go. No, nope, you're right back to where you were. What are you doing down here? Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. This is, we're getting lots of interruptions here. Anyway. Uh, the Penguin Classic version of the Psalms, which they very wisely detached from the New Testament, the Old Testament, the Bible just in general, uh, is translated by Peter Levy with an introduction by Nicholas Delange. Uh, and it includes a, a, the standard great Penguin Classic introduction to the whole work, plus uh, rudimentary explanatory notes. Keep in mind, these are mostly used for schools. Uh, it's, it's rare to have a, a normal individual or as close to normal as I get who loves them as much as I do. They're only, these are mainly the editions that you get in schools. Uh, and it's perfect for that. But I maintain that nowadays, especially in the 21st century, people just in general, the general omnivorously curious, strong reader is largely ignorant of these things. So it works just the same <laughs> for them. And it, naturally, the, the, you, you're going to wonder when you go through here, uh, Sorry, I'm a little distracted. You're going to wonder when you go through here what the translations are like. Uh, so I thought I would go straight to the source here. I thought, this is Peter Levy's translation of the one psalm that everybody knows, at least in part, and that is Psalm 23. Uh, God is my shepherd, I shall not want. He will bring me into the meadows of young grass. He will guide me beside quiet water. He will strengthen my soul. He will lead me in the path of justice because of his name. And when I walk in the valley of the darkness of death, I shall fear no evil, because you are with me. Your crook and your staff will be my comfort. You will set a table for me in front of my enemies. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup overflows. Your goodness and your mercy shall follow me through all the days of my life, and I shall live in the house of God for the length of my days. So that, is, that has the virtue of being clear and very uh, easy to follow. It doesn't have anything like the sonorous rhythm of the King James Bible, and therefore, and you can tell that because it varies from the King James Bible. The King James Bible, everybody knows. Uh, but uh, as I think I've made clear, these things have been part of the literary and cultural heritage forever. And so lots of people have had their way with this, not just the translators of the King James Bible, but lots of other translators as well. Every new Bible has a new version of Psalm 23. And uh, that literary tradition, that literary heritage of lots of different people taking lots of different whacks at this original material, is reflected in another series 
that Penguin used to do. And the, I have a volume called The Psalms in English, which is part of that series. So and so, such and such, X in English, which gives you a history, basically, of translation of whatever the key work is. Not in the formalized sense of, of a narrative history, but rather by showing you different translations from different hands in different periods throughout centuries. And it's, they're wonderful for that, especially since the editors of this series, this, this volume is edited with an introduction by Donald Davey. The editors in this series do a lot of digging. They find a lot of people that you would not otherwise know. This is not just, these are never just collections of famous translators, uh, famous poets. And, uh, <laughs> and the one of the only translations of Psalm 23, I think uh, Donald Davey makes the wise choice in this book to avoid Psalm 23 in favor of all the work that's been done on all the other psalms. One of the, one of the only translations of Psalm 23 I wanted to share with you here, because it's by, it's by a 16th century poet uh, called Thomas Sternhold, who is famous mainly for being so bad a poet that poets in the subsequent generation and in all later generations hated him and went out of their way to say, of all the poets that I've read, this is the worst. <laughs> so you might wonder what he's doing in here. And our editor explains himself. Uh... He says, Sternhold was a pioneer, if only in getting his metrical versions out of manuscript and into print. As often happens in literary history, his pioneering is counted upon, is counted unto him for virtue or as compensating for what even his apologists recognize as stylistic ineptitudes. In fact, the exasperation that in the next century Sternhold aroused in John Donne and Henry King was thoroughly deserved. His versions were written in rhyming fourteeners disguised in the printing as alternating tetrameters and trimeters. The modern reader can learn to relish that obsolete measure, the 14er, in, for instance, Golding's translation of Ovid's Metamorphoses, but recasting Sternhold's false quatrains as true 14ers does not rescue him. The meter j remains jogtrot. His, the last line of the introduction is, his Psalm 23 is unrepresentative, a happy exception. Meaning that in, in our editor's view, his version of Psalm 23 is pretty good, at least compared to the rest of what he did. So I thought I would read you that. <laughs> this, is the, uh, sa this is the same psalm that we just heard. Uh, My shepherd is the living Lord, nothing therefore I need. In pastures fair, with waters calm, he sets me forth to feed. He did, not co he did convert and glad my soul, and brought my mind in frame, to walk in paths of righteousness for his most holy name. I trust that you're by now needing a Dramamine and are feeling the effect of 14ers. They, that is just what they are like, and they, that's why they are avoided. <laughs> but, we're not done yet, though, sorry. <laughs> yea, though I walk in the vale of death, yet will I fear none ill. Thy rod, thy staff, doth comfort me, and thou art with me still. And in the presence of my foes, thy ta my table thou shalt spread. Thou shalt, O Lord, fill up my cup, and eek anoint my head. Through all my life thy favor is so frankly shewed to me that in thy house forevermore my dwelling place shall be. And that was done in 1565, and I think we can agree that in this particular instance, Donald Davy is just plain wrong. That's awful. <laughs> That's just awful. <laughs> so there you go. That is the Psalms in, in the Penguin Classic. It's mostly a Frida video because she distracted my otherwise steely concentration. <laughs> but uh, the Psalms are beautiful. I couldn't live without them. I myself, of course, eat, sleep, and breathe the, the King James Version. I know those versions of most of the Psalms by heart. Uh, these, these adaptations are always interesting, and that is true whether you have a Penguin Classic or all of the oddities collected in the Psalms in English, or whether you go to someone like Robert Alter, who went through the whole of the, of the Old Testament and re gave it all a complete revamping according to just trying to stick very close to the originals. No matter what, it's all fascinating. A hallmark of great literature is that it can take that kind of warping and woofing and, uh, and still yield, still yield treasures. Uh, so that is, our, that is our Penguin Classic for today. It's neither ancient Greece nor ancient Rome. <laughs> it's it's the, the ancient Hebrews and one of the, one of the literary gems contained in the Bible, uh, the Psalms, uh, which are well worth your time. <laughs> but, uh, but that's going to be, that's going to be it for today. I thought it was a, 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 a fitting choice for a Sunday, <laughs> but I'm, I'm going to wrap this up and go see what's eating the bean. <laughs> Since he interrupted me so many times, I almost thought about turning off the camera. <sighs> anyway, I'll wrap this up, but our March of the Penguins will continue. <laughs> Thank you, book two.